Hi. Um, this is going to start a, a whole different kind of flavor to these videos. We've put a lot of information out there. We've, we've done a lot of entertainment. We've done a lot of interactions. We've done a lot of uh, experiences, showing you a lot of different dogs. Had a lot of happy fun. But at this point, I'd like to start getting into um, talking a, a period here where we talk about a new way to think of rescue. Rescue to people makes their heart go pity pat because they, for one thing, save a dog. Their perception is they save a dog. Okay, that's great. I mean, rescue is important. I do a lot of rescue. But I don't look at rescue as the complete picture. Because truthfully, if we're comparing dogs to employees, rescue is nothing more than an employee that has lost a job. When you take a dog out of a bad situation, you've put him on unemployment. You've taken charge of him. Now when we really think about it, that puppy over there, eight week old puppy, has lost his job. He was employed in Michigan for entertainment. He came here Saturday. We did some temperament testing. And he stayed. Everybody else left. Oh dear. Sounds like a job loss to me. So if you look at it that way, truthfully, any puppy that didn't stay with the breeder is a rescue dog. Now rescue, okay, it's great. But if there's not rehabilitation, rescue in itself is oftentimes very negative. to be the right match and you and the dog learn to coexist and it's great fun. The problem with that is, again, if you're looking at them as employees, unless that dog is given job training, it knows how to do the job it did, but it doesn't understand how to do the job you need it to do. So in many cases, our dogs these days have a very low bar of expectations. The bar is set so low that people are expected to learn to live around the dog and make the dog happy rather than making themselves happy. Now we've got some dogs that, that I've had on the videos before but we haven't seen for a while. Because my belief is most dogs need a real downtime after they've lost their home. This is Toby. He's a two-year-old Chihuahua. He was abused. He was paired up, paired up with a deaf Chihuahua, and the two of them depended on each other. Toby's eye was injured. He was never saved, so he never learned to um, trust people. Then they got tired of the dogs, put them on Craigslist. Fifty bucks, they sold the deft one. But because his eye was injured, it was bulging. He was sent to the Humane Society. He was in a total panic. So Toby came here, a, res a woman rescued him, and then he came here. But then when he went in my kennel, he did the same thing he did at the Humane Society. She didn't want to train him, so he tried to bite everybody that came near him. It has taken probably six months, and this dog now, because of the other dogs, has learned to trust me. Didn't trust anybody else. So his rehabilitation is to get him to trust other people. 
He's a diminished little dog that truly is. This is this is really sad. Now we're gonna take a break here. Puppy's we'll all put away now. He's safe. Now, when a, in a limited situation where it's small, there's limited number of dogs, Toby's great. He's house broke. He struts around like he owns the place. He jumps in his crate. He's very happy. He snuggles down under covers. But when you get him out into the world with all these big dogs, he has no confidence around big dogs. He's scared to death of them. So for that reason, he doesn't need to play. Now... I got a few other ones down here, <laughs> and they're everywhere. All right, easy. Now you got Harry behind you. That's it. All right. Now Haiti is a dog that went into a home. The home didn't quite work out. She went back to the breeder. She had had some training. Now, she wasn't a rescue in the classic sense of the word. But believe me, she is the reflection of the house she had before. And it's tough, and it's active, and she's got a lot of drive. She's learning how to fit in. And that's not by letting her play. She's way too powerful. She's also learning to take correction from lesser individuals, which is funny. But she has to be tolerant or she's dangerous. Skippy over there has found a lap to sit in. Skippy's the dog that is here because he ripped, um, Sue was working at the vet's office and he ripped her hand open, then he was under quarantine they neutered him, and he came here. He came here, um, and we did a rehabilitation on him. His video, I wish you could see it. He was a tiger. An amazing thing. He still worries about some people, and he's much, he'll bark at them. So he's still suspicious when she stands up, but when she sits... I was saying, he bit you at the vet's office, oh, yeah. and so he's still suspicious of Sue a little bit. You can see it's not an open, you know, welcoming kind of an attitude, but when she sits, he'll very often sit in her lap, and then it's okay. Skippy has a real funny way of temperament. He's up there in the lap where he wants to be. Uh, it's funny because we talk about rescue. Kate came from a breeder. Sue went and picked her up, brought her right to the kennel. There was no connection between Sue and Kate for months. Now she's about six months old. Now we're developing the connection. And that's important because when she, if she just started with this dog, she would have had this sweet little boring dog. Sue wants a dog that's got some toughness to it. She has it. Okay, my little walking partner is Lily. He's just watching. Lily was a dog that was totally unsocialized. She tried to bite me the first time I went to touch her, and she'd bitten other people. Um, she was never abused, but she was handled unfairly. The husband babied her, the wife corrected her. Now, to her, she wasn't abused, okay? Um, but on the other hand, if both of you, if this is level and the husband is here and the wife is here, that's not a big deal. But if the husband babies to this level and you correct to this level, it doesn't have to be abusive. It's abusive to her. Okay? Make no mistake about it. Hey, the correction and the praise has to be a balance. Quiet. So if in fact the line is here and the, the husband's gushing and babying is here, then the forces the wife to have to correct up here. That leaves a big gap. Good girl. This dog needed more consistency. She needed a level that didn't vary beyond here. And she's got that now. 
At this, I don't need a lead on her, but at, if I want her to stay here, otherwise she's out checking everything. So Lily is learning to be social. She's learning to be social with both people and dogs. That's important. This dog hadn't been around a lot of appropriate dogs. She was scared of big dogs. She was afraid of a lot of things, and she was only afraid because she didn't have a clue what to do with them. At this point, Lily is ready to become a reading dog, to become anything she wants to be. Um, she's got a, a little ways to go before she would even be um, anywhere near ready for placement, but right now, she's a fantastic dog um, as far as teaching other dogs that aren't quite sure what they're supposed to be doing. So I use her to train small dogs and puppies. She teaches them control without having to be tough, fun. She's a pretty cool dog. Z over there. Where's Z? Good dog. We've all seen Z in a lot of the videos. Z is here only because they were going to shoot her. She was aggressive. She would fight with other dogs. She was rough with kids. She really was not a nice dog. She actually enjoys correcting dogs like that. Good girl. The difference is now she doesn't necessarily get in a fight with them. She corrects them. Sometimes I have to remind her not to be quite so enthusiastic, but she, for the most part, does really, really well. Now, in some ways, when we get to that, to all this, Brandy, never been a rescue dog, but... Kathy's sister has a pit bull that bullies this dog. For that reason, Brandy was becoming aggressive to other dogs. What was the fix, Kath? Kennel. Put her in the kennel for a while. Give her some no pressure time. Put her on a diet. Brandy is now playing with other dogs, which is really cool. We're very careful who we let her play with, but she is out there carrying bones around and smiling because she's now with dogs that don't hurt her. Benny is a dog. He's never been in rescue. But he was, he was born when um, it was cold outside. He went to live on a farm. Didn't spend a lot of time inside. So Benny has learned to operate around the outside edges and for that reason, he's learning to have confidence in the middle of things. And it doesn't happen overnight. That's not training. That's conditioning. All of this happens over a period of time because it's the lifestyle that makes the difference, not the training necessarily. Okay, those are rescue dogs, right, Ruby? <laughs> okay. Now, they're not officially rescue dogs. But on the other hand, they've lived in the kennel, they've lived out here, they've lived up there with me, they've gone to everywhere and their brother. These dogs have learned, like a rescue dog needs to, to be adaptable. For that reason, these dogs can go anywhere. Okay, how about Otis? Is he a rescue dog? Well, he kind of is. Because as a puppy, he was a pain in the neck. So in this case, it wasn't Otis that was the rescue, it was Julie. Julie had to have more training than Otis. Now that Julie's doing what she had to do, hey, he's a great dog. Now we've met, we've met Maggie a number of times before. Maggie is, again, came from a breeder, never was without a home, but she's lost, what, three jobs? Okay. She's also been here, so she thought she lost another one. Then she went back home, so that was another one. So in reality, she's moved five times. How many kids can go to school five different schools within a year? How many employees could get five different jobs in a year and have any sense of 
you know, consistency or confidence at all. But well, there's a rescue dog. Again, it was Nancy that needed to change, not the puppy. That's a common thing. Because Nancy wasn't doing anything deliberately wrong, neither was Julie. But they were doing as their previous dogs had conditioned them to do. So when we've lived an experience, we've lived the lifestyle, then we just automatically assume all dogs should be that way. Well, that's not true. It can be different. That's rehabilitation. Teaching a, a person or a dog to think differently. Uh-oh. This diva. Rescue dog? Well, not in the real sense of the word. But she has lost a couple jobs. She was born at Cheney's house. She came here. She thought she had it made. She was part of a whole group of dogs. Then she went to live with Sue and Wayne. Oh, my gosh. It's different being the only dog, isn't it? She's not sure. So she's playing games with Sue. The games that she played here with the other dogs, she's playing with Sue at home. And she's enjoying it quite nicely. We were talking before the video started about how uh, some strategies uh, to fix this. Now, because she was successful here, it is not unheard of. She comes back for a week and you restart. Because if an employee's had a suspension, sometimes the best thing you can do, give them a suspension, then rehire them, and they promise, right? Okay. I believe that we need to get out of this uh, romantic view of rescue. Rescue is a dog that has been usually started incorrectly. It doesn't trust, it's been abused, it's been lied to, it's had inconsistencies, it's been overcorrected, it's been undercorrected, it's not socialized. And we're trying to convince people that they should just take any dog that comes along because they're cute. Cute has nothing to do with it. Then the emphasis, sadly, is put on performance instead of relationship. When that happens, you end up with Harry. This is Harry. Harry's probably one of the luckiest dogs in the whole wide world. I've done enough Lakeland rescue. Believe me, when they get to be five, six years old, you aren't going to change them much. You can put up with things. You can do some training. But unless you are really, really uh, determined, a, an adult Lakeland who's set in his ways, who's aggressive, who's got terrible habits, is a problem. Now, the reason Harry is so lucky, first of all, he came from a good breeder. She's not necessarily a trainer, but they're handled properly. So he's good about grooming. He's good about those things. He was sold to some people in New York City. Nothing wrong with that. But they started having problems with him when he was about like seven months old, something like that. I don't even remember. And they actually sent him here for training. So at seven months old, Harry came here, and he spent a month with me, and he was wonderful. At the end of the month, the woman flew in, spent the weekend here, and then took him home. In a week, the husband called me and said he doesn't remember anything. Well, I knew better than that. And in talking to him, when I suggest that a dog is tied so they have security, uh, they were tying him out on the balcony over the traffic. This dog was so insecure. So for five years, I'm sure this dog lived a fairly difficult existence. I'm sure that he could not please anybody. He lived a lifestyle of not being valued a whole lot. 
And finally, finally, at six years old, he went back to the breeder. And good for her. Good for her. At that point, he went out to Denver to a person who knew all about terriers. That is the, that is the scariest statement that anybody can say to me. I know all about terriers. You know about yours. I mean, you thought you knew all about Airedales, didn't you? Nothing wrong with that. Okay? Because you know all about your Airedales. But when someone says they know all about something, that means they're going to be really reluctant to change. Um, I would email connection. Um, it didn't work out, I'll just say that. Okay. Then he went to Minnesota to Sarah, president of the Lakeland Club and head of rescue. And Sarah says he needs some work. He came here, and this dog was about as angry as it gets. Why wouldn't he be? He was given away at seven months old to earn praise, but it didn't help. It didn't help. He knew how to do the job. Nobody asked him. When he came in, I said to Sarah, I don't know if we're going to be able to really salvage him. I can train him, but I don't know about placing him. And that was true. We don't have a flowery view of a dog that's already just grabbing things and shaking them, growling and crazy and running back and forth in the kennel, just slamming on the doors. That's not looking good. But we gave him, how many, what's he, about three months? Somewhere in there, four months. Okay. We did very little with him other than make him appreciative of <laughs> just about any attention he got. And finally, one day, he decided he wasn't so angry anymore. At that point, I knew it was time that we could start working on him. And he began to come into class and just be tied to the wall. And he found that was the highlight of his week, being tied to the wall. Whoopee. But there was no pressure, there was no negative, there was no nothing. Then you begin to start looking for possible homes. Now with a dog like this, the last thing I look for is someone who loves dogs. This better be somebody who's really looking for a special employee and willing to step up and do what's necessary for that employee to succeed. One day I got a call. When this dog was in the kennel, he wasn't. He needed grooming really bad. Stumped like mad. Now not. I mean, he wasn't. Well, he was gross, but he wasn't unhealthy. He was just in the kennel. He stunk too bad to hug. So all we did was go out in the back and go for a walk. I turned probably six, eight dog Lakelands loose. They thought they wanted a Lakeland. I had a couple other breeds in there. And then I introduced them to him. First we had to establish that they actually were interested in the breed. They were. They'd had a bad experience with wire fox rescue. And they wanted to do it differently. So my feeling when we start dealing with dogs... We have to begin with the basics. Skippy, enough. We have to first begin with the basics. Then we teach the dog to have fun with the basics. Then we can teach them any activity that we want. My other thing about dogs is there's one magic number, three. Three successful repetitions, and the dog believes it may be the beginning of a habit. Good boy. So that first, oh, you're rolling on the dachshund. Hold on. 
You got her tip line tangled up in the, there you go. There she's loose now. Okay. Whoop, there we go. So the first day they came didn't count. They were just meeting the breed. Second time they came, he was tied to the wall during a class. Third time they met, they actually worked him in class. Tomorrow, he goes home for a home visit. Now, before I give the approval for a dog to go home, it's not taught obedience. It's taught to be appropriate in the three areas. Patience. I'd say we got it. Handling. This dog is really, hey, easy. Really good to groom. All these behaviors are things he learned when he was a baby. Boy. He has to be around, he has to be appropriate around other dogs. He was in the center there. He has to walk on a lead. Oh yeah. I, I take, okay, I said that wrong. He has to also be, the motion exercise, he has to be appropriate on the lead. That's when other dogs are around, when kids are around, when there's distractions, when there's activities, when I don't care what. Come on. Easy. Good boy. A rescue dog that has been rehabilitated like this is going to go into a home and stay there. The only failure is, is if the people, hey, good boy. You notice he's trusting me even if that big great Dane said, I'll come get you. He came back to me. That's the way it should be. Good boy. He has to be appropriate. Hey, wait. Hi there. Good wait. Easy. Hi there. there. Come on. You're fine. Good boy. Now, there's a reason we have a 97 to 98% success rate in rescue dogs. Because we don't settle for just rescue. Rehabilitation is truly the key. Now, you have a rescue dog. Rehabilitation is what kept her in your house, isn't it? Because had she not been rehabilitated, and you too, we're still working on you. So would we say Harry's doing pretty good? Yeah, we would. They've already had him in the car, took him to the park. No problems. Rides in the car just fine. We traveled all over the United States. Yeah. <laughs> He's been more... more uh, states than most people. <laughs> Haven't you, Harry? Are you a good boy? Harry, sit. Sit. Good. Sit is a position. I want that attitude. Training for performance can happen anytime. I don't care about that. The attitude, the trust, the relationship is far more important than anything else. Now at this point, you just wait for the good stories to come back. There'll be a month of adjustment. Harry's going to be testing them because he doesn't believe anybody else in this world does this except me. So imagine how scary that is to put your trust in another person. That's where we're at. The fact that they've proven it to him three times and the fourth time will be even more successful. Harry's beginning to believe they mean it too. They're wonderful people. Good boy. And by George, I think we're going to be fine. Aren't we, Harry? Good boy. All right. Now, although I say we don't worry about performance, yes. 
at this Ooh. stage. Well. I am serious about that. I don't do my judging of dogs as performance. But, along with that, we need to give people who are working with the dogs some guidelines. The old citizenship test was much less involved with obedience if you did it in a watered-down version. I believe that's what pet people need. I've seen too many dogs go through the citizenship test, and it was nothing more than an obedience exercise, and it was not the attitude of the dog, it was training. When I do these classes, it's based on manners. Once the dog has good manners, then we make the manners fun, then we teach the performance. So we do it a whole different way. Conventionally, you went to an obedience class, you went to an agility class, you went to a confirmation class. The dog had to go from one class to the other and somehow figure out why one class he got corrected for sitting and the next class he was corrected for not sitting. It, I found it very unfair. So, the citizenship test that they came up with, I don't know how many years ago, years and years ago, um, in the beginning, was definitely a manners test. And th that's exactly what we do. Unfortunately, when it's a performance, it eliminates a lot of really good people from the dog world. If the only ones that can achieve this are the high-scoring obedience dogs, that eliminates 90% of the dogs in the country. Manners is by far the most important. So we have dogs in here that do everything. That's exactly what they should be. Okay, so we're first going to say praise them up forward. And this means they're to walk on a nice loose lead. Wander around, not just around the circle. Go through the center. Go around those cones. So the dog has to be appropriate with other dogs, with other people. And also, everybody get in the elevator. Now you're going to shake hands, but your dog is not to be sniffing everybody. Leave it. You need to be able to be close enough to shake hands. The dog has no business sticking its nose all over anybody. Personal space is very important. They have to behave around other dogs. Don't leave so far. You wait. Come on, Brad. You go away from me. She's not in the 
Now, activity is back. No. Now, go correct her. I told you wait. 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 Now, return to her. You wait. Don't touch her right away. You wait. Staring her in the eye. Now, touch her. And now tell her good way. Good way. There. Good way. Good job. Good way. All right. Spread them out. Girl. Come on. Come on. Girl. Girl. Now, I mean, inside the circle, outside, don't, don't be near. Not just walk around. Now, you got to park somewhere, but spread them out. You're too close. Wait. There you go. Hey, sit. Around, stand around. Sit. Wait. You're fine. Wait. 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 I laugh his confidence when he's not with me. Wait. Get him crazy. You wait. You gonna go nuts? Come here. You gonna go nuts? This is um, 
your cookies on the coffee table. Chocolate cookies. Leave it. All right. This is not a trick. This is not a piece of hot dog. This is a thousand dollar vet bill on a holiday weekend. <laughs> oh, oh, if only it was doubled. Now, don't train, oh, well, he got the hot dog. No, 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 no. This is poison. This is something that will kill your dog. Train for that. Praise him up forward. Walk in the park after a concert. Walk through it. Pass those hot dogs. Each one is leaving. Leave it. Oh, leave it. Good. Leave it. See, he's totally avoiding, which is good. Good. Leave it. Good. Okay, park by a hot dog. Pick it up, but don't give it to him. Did you get one, Ruby? I have one. Okay, oh, pick it up, but don't give it to him. I got one right here. Sit. Around. Around. Sit. Around. Wait. I got one. Set. All right. Now, Kathy's dog will wait. Wait. So go ahead and, and tell her Sit. to wait, Kath. Sit. Sit. Wait. Here. Wait. Hi. You wait. Wait. Okay, go ahead and leave. Wait. Wait. Good. Good. Wait. wait. You wait. You wait. Wait. You wait. Good. wait. Now, this dog wait. needs to also wait. be able to come to you. Through other dogs, past people, past. Wait, okay. Wait, Brandy front. Brandy easy. Beautiful. Easy front. Praise her, but don't give it to her. Good girl. Put her on head. Okay, walk back to where you were. Wait. Wait, easy. Easy. Easy with me. That's about as pretty as it gets right there. Don't give it to her, just park right there. You're good. Around. Come on, around. Get around here. Get around here. Get around here. Wait. Hey. Nice. Wait. Okay. Thank now, you. Diva has not done this, okay? All these dogs are at different levels. So it's not pass or fail in my book when we're doing this. This is training. So you're going to tell her to be easy. You're going to walk over there. Just kind of, that's it. Okay. Just, you're fine. Go a little past that cone. You're fine. You're fine. Okay, now you're going to call her like you just love her. Come on. You're going to clap your hands and back up. Right now. Diva. Hey, come on. Good girl. Wait. 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 Keep talking. Good girl. Come on, Diva. Come on. Good girl. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Good. There you go. There you go. Now bring her back in. That movement gets that Wait. dog coming. Good girl. Okay, Ruby. Whatever you want to do. Wait. I'm going to call her like Bill. <laughs> like Bill? Okay. Wait. Now, this is a dog that's being raised for somebody else. Well, she's been here for over two years. She's wonderful. She's got obedience title. She's, she's a wonderful dog. She had two litters of puppies. Okay. So. Annie, come here, Annie. Come on. Oh, what a good girl. And that's exactly right. You have to raise that dog the way that person wants it. The tough thing about here is she was raised like I wanted her. And that's where you're struggling is because she wasn't raised specifically for you. She was raised to just, you know. And that's fine. Okay, Julie, do you need me to hold it? Hold it? Sure. No, no. I'm sorry, I'm going to give him the hot dog. Wait, no. Wait. Wait. You know, it's kind of like I was telling you about the McDonald's thing. You're fine. Okay, just wander away. Now you're going to stop right about there, and you're going to, when you call him, you're going to back up. Come on, guys. Back up. Back. Oh, yeah, bring him back here. Yeah. Good boy. She does. Don't worry, there are no problems behind. Now, see how embarrassing that'll be? Right on video. For the world to see. Tell him he's Okay, now with all confidence. Come on, Otis. Back up. There. Boy. That's the kind of recall you want. Unless you're 
Okay, Ruby. Okay. Why don't you go over here? Because I want you to walk Benny. Maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Benny needs somebody with some confidence. It's okay, Diva. Come on. Come on, Diva. Yeah, I see that. Come on, Diva. Come here. Good Diva. And praise him up forward. Come on, Diva. Lots of heavy rock. Easy to push your thing. And the bus turn go the other way. Good boy, man. Hey, I told you you didn't have to worry. He's a good boy, Cooper. You are a great little dog. Right turn to the center of the building. Your dog with other people? How did she do? You should have. Benny did really good. Yeah. Um, sometimes when we get into the same old working habits, we forget that the dog changes with every training. It's important that you keep track. So watch your dog in situations. It really is about the relationship. So if someone else is able to do more with your dog than you are, you better be watching that person. Sell them. Sell them, that's right. <laughs> and we laugh about that, but of course, it's not true. Now, did any one of these dogs that you worked, because we worked a number of different ones, did any one of them throw up a red flag that, whoa, this is dangerous? No. Cooper was walking right along with me. <laughs> well, you're not his person. The fact that he didn't drag you across the room says big thing. He stopped after a second. He did, but that was up to you. You know the same words. Kind of the rule about this exercise is if you have trouble with every dog, there's something that needs to change in you. If your dog behaves better for other people than it does for you. Guess what? That's on you, too. On the other hand, if you had no problems with most of the dogs here, first of all, it says the other people did good, and you're doing right. And if your dog worked for other people, I mean, you should be so proud. It says you've done things right. Any dog can have an on day or an off day. But when you throw them with this many different handlers, that's your dog. You're, you're seeing adaptability. That's the one thing that um, is going to kind of be a holdover with Harry over here. When he sees that Great Dane, he's very concerned. He didn't want to go after the Great Dane. You didn't want the Great Dane to go after him. He wanted me to come over and deal with him. He was willing to take the correction because he wanted me by him. He was worried. Is no problem. And furthermore, I'm backing away at this point, and they will step up. So they will continue to come to class. And that's right. Okay. Yeah, we're going to... All right. I would say they probably have earned a hot dog, wouldn't you? <laughs> Go ahead. And that means they have to be Sit. polite Sit. with Sit. food as well. Sit. Easy. 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 Now the other thing we just got through correcting them for picking up hot dogs. It's okay. It's all right. A dog that is cautious about junk on the floor is a dog that's not going to get poisoned as easily. 
Now, when we have dogs that'll do these things, these are nothing but manners. When we have dogs that'll do these, paired up with a dog that's been conditioned to be tied to the wall and calm and patient, plus is good to be handled, groomed, go to the vet, I'd say that's a pretty well-adjusted dog. <laughs> the one thing we didn't do is leave them unattended, but our dogs are tied to the wall a lot. It's kind of a boring thing because you leave them for five minutes and it's not even a challenge at this point. Cool. Any questions, complaints, comments? I'd say you guys did pretty darn good today.